Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to turn it over real quick. We're going to just jump, jump jump straight into the weather with Jay Grimes. He's going to give you a quick update, and then we're going to go through some of the cabinet secretaries to give them give you an update on where we where we stand as a state, and then we'll turn it over to the governor in the end. So, Jay, can you please step up? All right, folks. Well, uh, the first story here is to be aware that you still have today to prepare. We are going to start to get some rain in the area, but the real action doesn't start to kick in until Wednesday. Look for tropical storm force winds to start making their way along the coast and moving inland by the mid-morning hours. Uh, landfall looks to be during the afternoon or early evening, but probably mid-afternoon on Wednesday. So tropical storm force winds begin tomorrow morning. You need to have everything completed by that time. Could be looking at storm surge anywhere of six to even 10 feet over portions of Vermilion and Atchafalaya Bay, depending on the track of the storm. Now, if you've been watching the storm tracks over the last 24 hours, they've been ever so slightly easing a bit to the east. So now the Baton Rouge metro area is under the gun in terms of a tropical threat. But I'm not convinced that that eastward shift is over yet. The storm has already begun its movement to the northeast, and so that's a little earlier than we thought it would, and that at least in part explains some of the eastward shift of the track. We need to keep our eyes on this one. It won't be Laura, it won't be Ida, but it is still going to be an extensive impact in terms of the roll of that storm as it rolls into south central and southeastern Louisiana. The good news here is it comes in at about 15 miles per hour, should push through relatively quickly. We're looking at rain totals of anywhere from four to eight inches of rain widespread across south Louisiana. That's going to push a number of rivers up to and even above flood stage. So that's going to be a problem. And also because of that forward speed, while the storm will get out relatively quickly, it's also going to drive those tropical storm and hurricane force winds up to and north of the I-1012 corridor. All of South Central and Southeastern Louisiana under the gun with this storm. Again, keeping an eye on whether we see another slight shift in the track over the next six to 12 hours. Well done, Jay. Uh, now we're gonna get a quick update from the Attorney General. Thank you, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's prepared, getting prepared for the storm today. Um, you know, while we usually see the best in people during a storm, sometimes we also see the worst in people. And so I want to talk to you for a minute about price gouging. Price gouging occurs when someone or a business charges prices that are extraordinarily disproportionate to the ordinary prices that would be charged right before the storm or during the storm. Um, we will have some information, some detailed information. We're going to put it out on the Get a Game Plan app. We'll also have that information available at our website at www.aglismo.com. If you suspect that someone is price gouging or has already been a victim while preparing for the storm, there's a few things that you can do. One, you can contact your local law enforcement. It, it can be a crime, um, so the first place you can go is to local law enforcement. You can also file a complaint at our website. The details matter, so when you do that, I would urge you to use as much detail as you can when you file that complaint. You can call the consumer hotline, which is that number is 1-800-351-4889. So I just wanna remind everybody that price gouging is illegal and we, can, we are monitoring that. We will enforce the law and we will make sure that no one is taken advantage of during the storm. It's not only wrong, it is illegal and we will enforce the law, thank you. Okay, now we're going to get uh, Doc Abraham to give us a quick update with LDH. Doc? Overall, the medical and water structures are intact in uh, cooperation with LNHA. LDH has almost constant communications with our nursing home. More dedicated resources right now to regions three and four. If the storm should shift, we will move appropriately and accordingly. Uh, and follow that as far as what regions become more involved. Right now, most nursing homes plan to shelter in place. As of this minute, only one has had a partial evacuation of Vermilion Parish. 
moved eight patients to Mansfield up in the Soda Parish, and that went very seamlessly. There are no reported issues from any hospital right now. Region 6, the Mega Center, stands ready. It's not open, but if, if they need shelter and if it needs to open, then the governor has that discretion. As far as our Medicaid patients, guidance is going out to the pharmacies to fill prescriptions only. That does not include, include control substances, but other substances and uh, other prescriptions. And that no car authorizations are going to be required. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to get a dual update between the Louisiana Public Service Commission and the DEQ on the utility of the project. Thanks. Good morning. The commission is mobilizing and communication with our electric facilities. They are currently all activating emergency response plans. We have about 7,500 additional crewmen in the environment and vegetation management personnel ready and waiting to assess the storm damage and then respond as soon as they are safe and able to do so. Power outages can be found on our website, which is www.lpsc.louisiana.gov. Can you say your name? Sure. Catherine Bowman. I'm the executive counsel. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality stands ready. Um, yesterday, we notified all of the licensed and permit facilities to make sure that they had their assets protected and secured. Um, we will and have been coordinating with the parishes and the municipalities to ensure that the emergency debris sites are ready. Um, for the nuclear power plants, which are Riverbend and Waterford, we are in contact with them to make sure that they are ready for the storm. And then also uh, for the public's awareness, we have our single point of contact. That is if there are spills. We also have our debris hotline. So if there's any of those questions, um, that information will be available on our site um, and we will keep that information updated. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to the governor. Let me shift everybody down a little bit if y'all don't mind. Shift everybody this way. And I'm gonna turn it over to the governor because it's important that you can see the app right there. Yeah, yeah, good morning. As you can see, the cabinet's been busy. We had a, a great UCG meeting. Everybody seems to be working uh, in unison. Uh, I feel uh, very confident that the uh, all of the agencies uh, are, are have activated their emergency response plans and crew positioning assets needed uh, for this storm. I want to thank Jay again uh, for the continual forecasting that he's giving us. I think that that adding that uh, dynamic and element uh, to GOSEP has been extremely useful. At yesterday's press conference, um, at some of the questions that I got from the media, I wanted to take an opportunity to, again, inform the citizens of Louisiana about the resources that we have put that are basically you can place in your hands, and that is the Get a Game Plan app. And you can go to your app store on your mobile device, and if you search Get a Game Plan Louisiana, it will populate first and you should download that app. When you download that app, it will ask you if you want the app to be able to track you. You may want to do that so that the app can then push out information in your area because the next um, the next notification that you get when you download the app is whether or not you want push notifications sent to you. This app will continuously keep you informed. Okay, about information in real time that is happening right here in GOSEP. So this app, it first serves as a preparation app. Inside the app, you can find a hurricane preparation list, a family plan, a business plan. Um, it has information where you can, uh, like, it, let's just say you're a single mother with three kids and a cat. You can put that information inside the app. And the app will tell you the things that you should populate in your hurricane prepare list, right? And then, and then we know what you have in your household as far as pets and children and, and, and personnel. So it's a preparation app. And secondly, during the storm, it can serve as an information app. It gives up-to-date content that's managed right here by GoSep. You can literally get information as quickly as I can 
through that particular app. It also, and then if you end up in an area under which you lose communication, keeping the app on your phone has location-based uh, uh, push notifications and the data inside for very Im uh, important information will be housed inside the app. So even if you lose communication, there are vi there's vital information that will stay in the app that you can access. And then finally, it serves as a post-storm information center. And so again, so after the storm, information that you're looking for will be available on that app. So I'll give you an example. Resources, disaster recovery assistance, DOT information such as road closures, evacuation plans, weather information, as I said earlier, the emergency preparedness guide, uh, are all things that you can find on this particular app, in addition to the public service announcements that we will push to you while utilizing this app. So again, I highly encourage the citizens of the state to take a look at this app. If you do not have a mobile phone, you can access this on a desktop as well. Again, as you can see by the information that was reported today, we are continually preparing for this storm uh, we will keep our citizens informed. Again, I'm confident that all of our agencies and our federal partners seem to be working very seamlessly. We are pre-positioning assets uh, so that they will be available to the public on a needed basis. With that, I am happy to take any questions. Is there with the wobbling of the storm, is that causing any challenges with the pre-positioning of any resources? No, I don't. I, I don't. I, I mean, look, I, and, and Jay can, can further confirm this. Storms wobble. It's what they do. It's, the, it's a normal track of wobbling that happens as hurricanes uh, um, approach the coast. And so I, I, I'm very confident that the, the, uh, the pre-positioning asset map that we have um, is going to be adequate for the storm that we're getting ready to face. And has the National Guard been deployed anywhere? Absolutely. I'll tell you what. <laughs> we'll have General Frito give you an update on... Um, on um, on some of the commodities and, and personnel that he has. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. So yes, the, the National Guard is mobilizing right now. We are deploying across uh, the coastal parishes and, and throughout Louisiana. Again, just like the, uh, the governor said, we have contingencies no matter where the storm wobbles. Uh, we place our forces where they can they can react. Go go north, go south, east, or west, and back to where we need those service members. Right now, we have um, we're focusing on uh, uh, high water vehicles and boats. We have 87 boats, 387 high water vehicles, and over 50 helicopters to uh, to work. The, which we think is the most probable mission post storm, which would be search and rescue. So those assets are out there right now. We're also pre-positioning commodities, uh, those uh, meals, water, and tarps, and those are staged as well. Right now, we have one million plus meals. 1.1 million liters of water and over 55,000 parts. Okay. And we hope we don't have to use all. Right. Okay, any other questions? Uh, yeah, Julie? Um, okay, the app. I, I understand you guys are modernizing. I think all the information on the app is great. I can't help but think about my family. My mother barely uses her phone for anything that's not a phone call. My father has glaucoma. He can't see anything on his phone. Uh, I think that there are a lot of people in this state who can't read very well. We've had many discussions about that in the legislature or who can't read at all. So what are we doing for people who can't? And, and post-storm, I mean, I remember Ida sitting in this room. No one had cell phone service. There was someone that was sitting with us, the governor, you and I both know really well, couldn't get in contact with their family for 16 hours because no one had cell phone service. So what are we doing if a lot of people, for people who don't have cell phone service potentially after a storm, and people who just like can't use this very easily? Well, there's a couple of things I would say, Julie. Uh, again, we're doing the same things we did before all this technology became available, right? All right, so that nothing that we've been doing in the past has changed just because we have this technology. This technology adds an additional layer. However, we do know that the vast majority of people in this state use social media, use their phones, access the internet, and guess what? They should take an opportunity to help those 
who came as well so that we can get that information. In addition, we have consistently, since hurricane season has began, informed our citizens in this state of what to do in order to prepare. The list and information that are that, that are out there can be used, can be printed out, and can be handed to those that may not have an opportunity to be able to access um, a mobile device or the internet. So again, we have tried to push this out to our community-based partners, NGOs, to our nonprofits. That's the job that they can do to help us and to help those citizens who are in that, that type of position. Again, on the communication side, I spoke to AT&T earlier this morning. I know we instructed the PSC uh, to reach out to the other network partners to ensure that they are pre-positioning assets. So we try to um, uh, address some of the communication disruptions of the past. And so as we get those, we will inform you in press conferences just like this as well. Again, we are welcome to take any type of, of comments or, or, or constructive criticism that we can to try to reach as many people as we can. However, I will tell you, as I travel the state, the vast majority of people are walking around with a phone just like you in your hand. In addition to that, as I said earlier, I think this is important. Even if you lose communication, the app is designed to keep vital information on there that you can access. They're going to have it all, but again, it's better than nothing. So thank you, but thank you for your question. Governor, yeah, um, it's my understanding that in the past there have been some state-run shelters, especially for medically vulnerable people. Can you tell us what has been opened for this storm or what you are prepared to open for this storm? Sure, it's, it's a combination. Our sheltering process is a combination. It's run by DCFS as well as LDH. When you're talking special needs, there's this joint mission between the two of them. All of it starts at the local level, and it goes back to the understanding of the app itself. All emergency management starts at that local level, and it goes to the parish level, where the parishes have their shelters responsible in there. Then there's a state plan where we absorb what's a parish does not have a capability or they're exceeded their capability. We have a state mega shelter that we have in Alexandria, and we have a state shelter plan. Right now, DCFS currently is prepared for 500 people as a backflow if the parishes run out. We have not received any requests from the parishes for assistance from the state. Most of the parishes do it so often and they're so good at it, they do sheltering on their own through the community centers and the churches and the schools is the first stage. But we're always there and we never leave anyone behind, it's particularly the ones with special needs and medical. Is that, does that mean the medical, the medically vulnerable shelter is open and where is it open? Okay, it all depends on by the parish, and all of this is on our app. It's all listed on there as an element of DCFS is linked into that, as well as LDH. Uh, the doc's probably better to talk about the medical needs shelter than myself. Um, we've got uh, three already that are open to you in the uh, May, and we've got a couple more um, open here in Assumption and the Police Care Home. They can open one shelter, so it's going to be open to you. Uh, region four, you have two open. Uh, region five had not opened the shelter, and region two had not opened the shelter. In New Orleans and the region one area, uh, two shelters are open. And so these things are works in progress. As the storm moves closer, uh, people are getting things in place, and uh, they can the citizens can access this on our website as to where these shelters are going to be. Is the shelter in Alexander ready to go? It's ready. Okay. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in terms of medically vulnerable shelters, are those all going to be locally run, or is the state mega shelter going to be prepared to take some of those people? Go ahead, Doc. You got it. No? They generally will do what they can do at the beginning, and most of the county town make a home and say, but if they certainly need us or us out, we're a phone call away. And they being the local shelters? That's right. Absolutely. Governor, I know this situation is not the same as Ida, but there was a lot of hard learned lessons uh, in emergency response and for evacuations and everything. What is something that you observed after Ida or a lesson that you learned that you want folks to keep in mind as we wait for this storm to come? Yeah, look, it's a great question. I think that every storm that we get gives us a greater uh, opportunity to see where there are deficiencies inside the system. 
Uh, I would tell you that I think that if, if there is an area that we can, we, we worked on with, and, and to my satisfaction is keeping people abreast of utilities, right? Of, of the number of linemen and crews that we're bringing in. Uh, there's a virtual map now that, that people can go to uh, so that they can understand how power is getting to them or how close that power is. Um, the communication side, we're going to work very closely with our communications partners to make sure that we keep the lines of communications open. I think that we can, we've learned that we have to be able to respond to making sure that people have lines of communication. So if at and is down, how does Verizon lay over that or vice versa or any of the other networks as well? I think that the, the, the closer and tighter you, um, uh, you basically tether the local, state, and federal partners together, and then as the cabinet works in conjunction with each other, we keep our communication lines um, open. I think that those are things that help us. To me, the biggest, where where we end up failing in all these storms is in communication, um, which is why we're doing it, which is why y'all are so important as well, uh, being able to help us push that information out. Um, and if you hear, if you have questions or you think, see things on social media that we're not answering, if you let our comms team know we will try to respond to those as well. One one more question. Yes, ma'am. What's the um, fastest way for people to learn about evacuation orders? Get a game plan done. I, I mean, I think that, look, we will, you know, GOSEP is putting information out as it happens, as we get them, as those evacuation orders happen, we put them out to y'all in the press. We, we immediately, as we are sending them to y'all, it gets posted on the app as well. Again, think about this. The app will tell you about those evacuation notices immediately because we push it out. And when can we expect the next press conference? That's that's what I was going to address. We do not want to put anyone at risk. Okay, so we, we will have a press conference tomorrow. However, we will most likely let the storm activity subside and we don't want to put anyone at risk trying to get here in all likelihood a little bit be sometime in the p.m. You will see an invite and we'll let you know what it's going to be. So we're not having another one today? We, there will probably not be another press conference today, correct. We want everybody to go home and be safe and prepare for the storm effects that will begin tomorrow. So the next press conference again will be tomorrow. Again, everyone out there, please be safe. Stay Louisiana strong and all the Louisiana agencies always have your back, always. And again, I'd like to um, you know, just to notice all our Louisiana citizens, we basically, we basically have about, certainly in South Louisiana, about a 24-hour window right now uh, to continue uh, to button down all the hatches, make sure that, um, you know, you've got flashlights, batteries, you go through your checklist, because after that 24-hour period, you will start to see the tropical forms. Uh, of course, winds, as Jay mentioned, uh, we can continue to pray that this storm passes over the state, you know, very rapidly. That will help us as well. Uh, any information that we can push out to the press, please uh, contact our uh, our comm shop and we will get you that information as soon as we can. Again, uh, we want everybody to be safe. We remind people that when this storm makes its way on shore, we would ask that you stay in your homes, right? Once you, had, once you have decided where you are going to be at the time that the storm comes on shore, you want to stay there. And then after the storm has passed, he yeah. asks that you stay there as well. Again, anytime you get out onto the roadway, you you then put further pressure on our first responders who are there trying to clear roads, our utility folks who are trying to get down lines out of the way, trying to get our power back up. Um, again, we try to put as much information out there. Uh, but again, if you go to the game plan, not our, um, I think that you will find all of the information necessary. Thank you.